Hello and welcome again to the Plone Newsroom, a podcast about what's new in the world of Plone. Uh, if you don't know that, uh, Plone is a open source content management system written in Python by a large and great and loving community of which we're a part of. Yeah. And this is our third episode. Um, yay. And it's recorded two weeks after the yearly Plone conference, uh, which we will certainly talk about. We'll probably uh, think... only talk about, Philip. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Let's see where we end up on the clock. So you're listening so... to Philip Bauer from Munich, and I am the co-host, Fred van Dijk, and I'm uh, doing this from Rotterdam. Um, this podcast is now not only on YouTube, but uh, we've also managed to get ourselves on the Apple Podcasts, and we're using Acast to, to actually store the podcasts. Uh, uh, and I think they also they also have an app on Android. So if you have, you can use uh, on iOS the Apple Podcasts app, where you also find Kim's uh, uh, excellent podcast. And we are now also on an Android app. If you need more information on that, it's on our uh, uh, small website corner on uh, wwwplongorg slash newsroom. Yeah, it's. Um, I'm not sure. I think it's not yet uh, findable in like a podcast app on Android. Yeah, but uh, we'll be we'll work on that. Yeah, that's the Acast app. We still need to c figure out how we can register uh, the podcast in in those so-called uh, directories. I already got a, got an email from someone about that. All right. So. Um, this is the first time we're recording this episode on my new uh, and beautiful MacBook Pro with, uh, you'll probably see the better camera, uh, see all the dimples. Um, Fred, he already, already has an excellent camera. His one's much better. It's not a built-in one. So I, I installed Plone on this MacBook Pro, which has the M1 Pro. I didn't go for the Max, obviously, because that, why would I need, I don't know, 12 cores or 16? Um, for a single threaded application. Um, I, but I, I managed to install Plone on Python 2.7 and it ran fine. There were a couple of issues with the M1, uh, especially PyEnv uh, M1 installation, uh, Python 2.7 installation. But there is, I think, enough documentation out there to get that done. Yeah, we, we still, uh, uh, so I, 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 took the, uh, I, I took the gamble already a year ago with an M1 uh, Mac Mini. Uh, there are some excellent uh, 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 stories on communityplone.org where I discussed with other people on how to get that running. Uh, and I, I also did the update uh, to the uh, to Monterey, which is the latest uh, version now for macOS systems. And I must say it, it is even uh, uh, quicker than it was before with the first version they, they did with for the new processors. And still my Python 2.7 environments are still fine. So I'm using a PyEnv uh, and then using uh, Brew to uh, install the lower level support libraries yeah, same to get here. it running. Um, yeah, we should have some more documentation on that, but uh, I'm, I'm very happy uh, with, the, with the, it's a small incremental update, uh, but it really, it really flies and it didn't break anything. So, hey. Yeah, my old laptop was uh, from, uh, I. I I almost said uh, 1997, but that was not <laughs> right. It was 2017, obviously. But still, it feels like a major, major upgrade. And voila, I got real arrow keys on the keyboard. <laughs> I would have paid a lot of money for those so, in, on the original. As you've iteration. noticed, we are the Apple fanboys over and out, back to Plone. <laughs> Our features, yeah. Philip. So yeah, we uh, in the first episode, we plugged uh, Plog. We plugged Plog, nice one. Um, as a excellent uh, event of the Plone community, um, it was not Plog, it was Plone Open Garden uh, in Sorrento. It's basically a sprint uh, in the in the spring every year, uh, but this year we had a, a different event in Sorrento, a fan zone where Plone conference open viewing happened. I actually didn't go, but Fred went, and he can yes. probably talk about our about that for hours. Yes, I, I was already dreading this this podcast a bit for the recording because there was so much information and so much fun and so much stories to tell about uh, the conference, about the fan zone uh, that we participated. There was some discussion beforehand. Should we, should, uh, should if we if we are able to uh, have a subgroup of the community meeting together in real life again after 1.5 or almost two years now? Should it be done a few weeks before, a week before? And I think the final one, uh, which now uh, was also done, was actually uh, to come together during the conference, which we'll talk a bit more about. So that's the feature. I will talk uh, quite a bit on the Sorrento Fan Zone, and I hope uh, that Philip will shut me up before we run out of time. 
Uh, then we've got, of course, the feature about the conference itself, our main uh, focus, I think, with the Plone Newsroom. So we'll be chatting a lot about that and we'll wrap up with some other uh, smaller news uh, and also our, one of our favorite pastimes, uh, discussing some add-ons. Yeah, so Sorrento, um, how was the weather? I, I, I think, so here it turned really cold and uh, unless you're in South Africa or somewhere else, it's starting to get really uh, autumny and wintry. So there is a beautiful pool and there's the sea. Did anyone jump in the uh, in the Mediterranean? Actually, yes. Actually, I think someone uh, uh, took a, took a swim in the in the in the Bay of Naples, or yeah, in that part of called the Bay of Sorrento. And we were very lucky with the weather. I mean, we've been. I've been. This was now my fourth time uh, uh, in, in Sorrento in all these years because we started somewhere in 2007 or 2008. I don't remember anymore. Um, but it was always in spring and then it was like, okay, we, we get a rebate from the hotel because they don't, are not filled with guests yet, but the weather is also uh, not there, but we have been so lucky a few times. And this time we also were lucky because when we arrived on Saturday, there was uh, a nice bit of sunshine. People actually used the pool on the first day. I declared them completely nuts, but I tried it myself a few days later and it was still excellent. So yes, I swam at the end of October. Um, and then, of course, we also had some rain, some drizzling uh, and some cloudy stuff. So we also sat inside and, and actually the mornings I was there one early morning wake. Uh, uh, I woke up a bit too early and I sat there around 730 and it was really cold outside. So, yes, yeah, but the view of Mount Vesuvius, the uh, view is, is I will show you some some pictures. Beautiful. So, uh, yeah, let's let's ramble so, on but, for me. But what is what? What's much more important than the weather is just meeting the community. The community yes. is the life force of meeting Rome people, and of us going. Meeting people in real life again. It was so invigorating. It was energy, energy, energy. Um, we, we've all been working uh, for our organizations or for our customers uh, uh, alone or with our own uh, uh, company or our own group of people, and we've built great things. But it was so, so nice to, to actually meet people again, talk about them, what did you do, how are you doing? Because we, besides of, of course, uh, plown the product and plown the community, there's also plown the people. So a lot of us know each other. I've met some friends as early as 2003, 2004, and you still see those people again uh, once or twice a year, or maybe two years not. So that was great to talk again and share even more what you already got from the online conference in 2020. Now with the 21 conference still online, but also the people in Sorrento, we shared so much information. We did so much talking. I mean, just look at the, look at the, we'll, we'll discuss it later, but look at the keynote from also from Chrissy on, on the state of the, yeah. of the Plone community. That's what the Plone community is out. It's about. Tears to my eyes, these pictures from, from uh, oh, yeah. older events and uh, seeing these, uh, these memories. It, it, it's not only a software, it's a part of our life. Yes, so, so it, was a, it was a humbling experience and I was very grateful to, to have that as a small subgroup. Uh, and I really hope that next year we will all be able uh, to have this experience again at a Plone Conf or at a Sprint or at... So how did our day look? Uh, we had a Sprint in the morning. Uh, uh, we had a, st a stand up at 10 and see if we could also get some people online, which actually which, which did happen. We participated with people online. Uh, then uh, around a quarter to three and some lunch in between wherever we're from, we, uh, uh, we had a stand up again. Uh, and then the, the Plone uh, Conf started uh, uh, until seven, uh, where we also had, of course, live talks uh, uh, recorded from Sorrento, which and I'll you show you. broadcasted it. the talks yeah. from Sorrento. Yeah, I'll to show the you world. some pictures. It was, it was really brilliant. So you've got, uh, you've got, of course, uh, 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 a subgroup of technical nerds together who know about open broadcast, who know about connecting three webcams to one laptop. And we had our, I think we have a new impromptu broadcasting team uh, in our community now that managed Excellent. to connect to connect uh, the local air room there with webcams and audio and whatever to, uh, to the Plone, uh, uh, to the Loud Swarm uh, installation. So, uh, sprints, um, we had some recording. I I'll very quickly mention some things uh, because there was so much done, uh, which I, I really can't do. So, Plone deployment, people talked about how can we uh, deploy Plone in a more containerized uh, way forward and also uh, generate templates for that, generate a new version of the Plone Docker image. Uh, there was discussion and work done on Plone in a box. So, distribution, kind of catering, a distribution of Plone that has some specific add-ons already installed to demo Plone on different cloud uh, instances like uh, uh, 
uh, like Digital Ocean or AWS or what if we have uh, or was other that things. based on Kim's work? That's based on, on Kim's work, yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, then there was a lot of fixes and improvements which I didn't really follow in detail for the React uh, uh, Volta front end. Uh, one of them, just to mention one person, but there was so much work done, is from Nicola uh, Sambello, who looked at uh, lazy loading uh, uh, the images in, in Volto blocks. Um, so yeah, it was it was uh, amazing. So to quickly connect some and show some pictures, um, are we there? Almost. Almost. Does it share? No. Let's see if I can say. Stop screen. Share screen. Share. It refuses. Oh, the demo effect. Oh, oh here, here it is. is. Yeah, there we are. So this is the weather when I left Amsterdam. This is when we almost got into uh, uh, into the uh, facility of Naples. Here you have Naples. It's yeah, it's an intriguing city. I've walked with you, I think, through the city center four years ago, last time. And then, that, if you look at the suburbs, it's it's not really that enticing, uh, but it's huge. It's, it's a Italian huge, suburbs. It's a huge city. So yeah. I always take the train. Uh, I, I took a taxi the first time I went to Sorrento. And after that, I swore to never use a taxi again in that area of Italy and just use the local uh, Circumfusuviana, which this is the, the Garibaldi uh, uh, stone station. This was actually the weather on Saturday, as you can see with Mount Vesuvius. Uh, we went for a walk to get some water and other stuff. You get these nice, typical, small uh, uh, street views in, uh, in, in Sorrento and St. Agnello, where we are. This is the intimidating uh, uh, Hotel Mediterraneo, which is only because I use the wide area, uh, wide angle lens uh, from my iPhone. It's, it's a lot pleasant to see it later. Yes, this is of course one of the things uh, Italy is famous for. So we shared some, we shared some secret addresses like, okay, here you can get some very nice stuff. Another nice view. Um, this is so the hotel. It's a story. So it's a very cliffy road uh, coast there. So there's a lot of, uh, and you see the, the hotel on, on the top right there. You can take an elevator to go down. Uh, the weather was yes, not too nice there. You end up at the sea level. In, yes, in so you tunnel. get to the sea level there. In that building, you go, get to the elevator. So this is the the location where we spent uh, most of our time during the day. Here you see the f one of the first talks we did live broadcast with from uh, Piero Nicoli talking about uh, EO Commune. Uh, a project uh, Red Turtle started uh, to offer municipalities in Italy also uh, uh, using Plone and using Plone with the new Volta front end. So this is how we did it there. Uh, this is me because we had this, this kind of gimmick running with all the t-shirts and I brought my t-shirt from 2017 with me. So I had to just put the silhouette on the t-shirt and, and Suvi is there. This is another talk here. You can see a bit about our, our, our broadcasting team in action. Uh, Victor, Piero Nicoli, Erico also uh, helped. Uh, and you see our, our overlord, uh, Paul Ruland, who uh, did a lot as, of... As, as usual, manages a lot of laptops at the same time. Yes. Yeah, so what, one of the important things he has done behind, and that, that's also one of the, the many people that were part of or the organization there, uh, uh, that, for example, organized the sprints, organized the, the training. Uh, so we got... Uh, 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 we were able to use uh, Zoom accounts uh, from a sponsor uh, to, to have the trainings on Saturday. Paul was monitoring the chat rooms, also the Slack uh, uh, we used for Plone. So that's also people in the background trying to manage things and keeping things in order. Like, just like, for example, the, the great team from uh, uh, Plone Loudswarm, uh, Loudswarm did that for the Plone Conf part. So, of course, these were so, you don't see that, but these were actually soaked with alcohol in the evening. So we did need some time to recuperate uh, for the next morning. Excellent dessert at the hotel uh, restaurant. Another nice yeah, view. Beautiful. So this is where you see the, the hotel uh, garden with a swimming pool. And then we were in that very large gazebo uh, 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 doing the sprints and participating in the conf. This is another part of the garden, which we didn't use that much this year, because as I told you, it was already getting a bit colder. Um, yeah, this is another nice gimmick we come up with. Uh, yeah, updated the t-shirt. <laughs> we updated the nice. t-shirt a bit from 2015. Uh, this is one of the stand-ups we did in the morning, uh, uh, talking with each other. You don't see the presenter here. And yeah, to, to finalize almost, this is of course the, in a small restaurant uh, uh, near to the hotel where we sometimes had lunch in the afternoon with excellent, excellent pizzas. Cool. That's mouth-watering. That's mouth-watering. So that's, that's... Not only for the food, but also for the company. Yes. So, well, let's quickly continue because I think I've already spent yep. too much time with all these nice pictures. Um, 
Yeah, as, as I said, I was uh, I was taking over. I was, I was dreading this because there's so much information, and I also we've both. It's now two weeks ago. We've looked back at the cons. I was actually there in Sorrento, and still there's so much information, and also sometimes. I think for people, conflicting talks, people talking yes. about, oh, look, you can change something here in this little detail. And then there's a, a state of uh, a keynote uh, 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 from Timo who says we should be uh, providing command and control and keep things min minimalistic. Then there's another talk again uh, uh, about uh, Plone 2 Classic and consolidating things for large organizations that still need updates on the old version of Plone. So that's to, to, to summarize it, I think... Uh, um, Plone has always been shifting between Plone the product and Plone the framework. And as you, what we've now ha seen in the last two years uh, with people uh, working their asses off to, to build great things on, on Plone the framework for their customers and for their own organization. Now with the upcoming release of Plone 6, you see the movement back again and a lot of effort to finish uh, Plone the product again. And that's when you see all these different talks about different parts of our system, about the community, about changing. Keep keep in mind, they're not really conflicting, but they are, sometimes they are more focusing on the framework and another time they are, they are focusing on the product. It sometimes seems that people are talking about two different products when you hear one talk on, for example, Timo's excellent keynote uh, on usab usability and uh, simplicity and um, but on the other hand, uh, I don't know, back end talks and theming and add ons where you can say, uh, tear the whole thing apart and put it back together in a completely different way. And I think, uh, the, uh, the talk by, uh, Hiro Stevens, uh, productizing Plon, uh, about his uh, experiences with Quave, uh, which is a Plon based intranet, uh, social intranet is an excellent product. Um, provided good context uh, if, if you want to watch that talk, because um, when they streamline Plone like a pro like a product that it, that it's then is uh, Castle CMS did something similar with a, a similar approach. And Volto is trying to do something uh, in, in the same direction, whereas uh, often when we have different kind of uh, clients, we uh, tend to uh, produce technical solutions uh, and n give even more power to uh, tinkerers, which uh, the, the system or the power that made Plone great because Plone, Plone got great uh, from being a system where uh, uh, a admin with the interest in tinkering with the system could build incredible, powerful features, whereas uh, products like, I don't know, Word, uh, okay, maybe a terrible example because I hate <laughs> Word, but uh, I don't know, a, a nicely built streamlined product with a beautiful user interface um, is something entirely different. And so that's these two worlds sometimes collide and people have uh, opinions, strong opinions and where sh we should go. Whereas we always go in, in both directions at the same time, we're providing more power to the, to the, to the users and we're in, in, we're streamlining the user interface and with the plan six, uh, that has gotten a complete, much, much stronger focus uh yeah. giving this yes. this streamlined and usable productish uh, interface to users yes so the conference recap we're going to try to do this in 10 or 15 minutes i'm not sure we had 290 total registrations this year uh we started off with the trainings on saturday and sunday uh yeah, they're said... already on youtube ah, great you can watch great. them now they're free um, we have which, which the, I already said that in a previous episode, but I'm excited that we have three completely new trainings. One is theming Plone 6 uh, Classic, uh, not Volto, uh, the Plone 6 Classic, which has Bootstrap 5 and NPM uh, um, um, ES6 JavaScript uh, by Peter Holzer, Stefan Antonelli, and Mike Derstappen. We have a new training which uh, by Erico Andre about deploying Plone 6. And from what I've heard after the uh, after the training is that they changed it all again. So he'll probably have to re-record that yes, training. I'm we not will, sure. We were, we were a bit of the guinea pigs. I followed that training of deploying Plone 6. It was usually interesting, but we also f figured out we, we still have a lot of, uh, of documentation to do there. And I, I think the, 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 the mastering Plone 6 training, it's 
it's not a new. It's I mean, it's it's the old one. But uh, Katja Sus and you did a lot of work on impro improving that also again for the for the React uh, uh, front end story. So you could, yeah, you could that you could also say that uh, the work you you together did was also a, a, a almost half a new training and trying to integrate uh, this information for the upcoming Plan Six. Yeah, most of the work was actually done for the conference last year because we used a. Uh, master branch of Plan 6, but uh, yeah, that's true. But there's a, another one which is completely new by David Bain. He gave a getting started with Plan 6 training using Volto, and I'm excited to have a um, editor, uh, a, a training f that's focusing on editors and users uh using the new front end that was something that we really yeah. missed and of course uh, a lot of the trainings were updated in some sense and also one of the uh, the photo uh, trainings for example done uh, by, by jacob he afterwards was like oh i still have to fix this 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 because this went wrong and somebody stepped over stumbled over this thing so that's it's it's really cool to see these trainings as a kind of living uh, document living documentation next to the documentation that we keep over every year um, yeah, let me quickly show you since we updated the um, the Plone uh, training website. Am I sharing this? Can you yes, see I that? Yes, I can see it. So yeah. The Plone training website uh, got relaunched, has a new theme. Uh, it's built in, this is the Mastering Plone 5 training, actually. This is the Plone 6 training. And here are, I don't know, here's a training on Plone workflows. Excellent. There's a lot of interesting resources here. Uh, the my favorite features are obviously the theme is great, but uh, the search Katya improved the search so that you can actually search for code snippets like browser view. Let's open uh, if I could type that would be helpful. Browser uh, view. There's no fuzzy search uh, and there. And you can see from which training this is. So this example is from Mastering Plone Five. This is from I don't know here lots of lots of Mastering Plone, but also other trainings. So that is uh, hugely helpful because it's a huge resource. The trainings. It's also now built on uh, Markdown, no longer RST, even though you can still use RST, and has a ton of other new features which are exciting. Yeah, and I think it also improves on the responsive uh, viewing. Uh, the theme was updated yes. by also, I think, uh, again, Katja, uh, uh, that did that together with Steve Percy, if I'm not mistaken, yes. to also fix other trainings there. So excellent work by them. Um, yeah, continue. PlanConf. It was, again, hosted on the Loudsporn platform uh, created last year by uh, Six Feet Up. Um, and it was uh, one of the things I read that there are some things I dread about Lord, Loud Swarm. That was my, my presentation last year, because if you record your presentation from home, you, you cannot have too many people in the same room again. So you are kindly presenting on your own. But that was solved this year by our, our broadcasting team. What's really great about Loud Swarm is that after an hour, you can go back and view all the other, the two, other two talks you missed uh, while you were watching talk number three, for example. Or you can do it in the evening, or you can do it in the morning. So it's, it, and that's something that's not possible. I've also seen other people saying like, look, you can walk out of rooms. But for me, the, the big selling point of using this, uh, what this system offers is you can, you can keep up with the conference and you don't get this feeling of, 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 of uh, 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 fear of missing out from, from other talks. And you can also talk with people about their talk you missed the next day, which really helped. So great system. Yeah, that's, that's true. But still give, giving a talk at, from home, like I did, is, is still it's talking into a black box, which is just a horrible experience because I don't know, you say something and you have no idea if you just said something incredibly stupid or incredibly funny, or I don't know, uh, you, and there's nothing. you have yes, zero yes, audience yes, reaction. Yes. The trainings uh, were done with Zoom, so you get some audience reaction, even though uh, people tend to switch off their videos, which makes total sense if you listen to a four hour training and so, but that was a great experience, uh, and and Lostworm is an excellent platform. It's built on Django, by the way, by uh, the Plone uh, company Six Feet Up. Uh, uses a lot of React and stuff, so it's really, really nice and slick uh, experience to uh, to yes. uh, have a conference with that. So the f talks are now still only available uh, uh, for the attendees. You can watch them one month, and I think you said uh, two or three weeks they are coming also on to YouTube. They will be published uh, publicly. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, after one month after the conference, which I guess is in two weeks, I'm not really good with calendars. Uh, 
all the talks will be on YouTube in the Plone video channel on YouTube. Um, and then you can catch up if you missed uh, buying a ticket for the conference. Don't worry, you can watch everything. Okay, Philip, let's try and have the main, uh, the main dish of our podcast, the talk highlights. Um, we were mentioned, we were, well, we were mentioned in the keynote state of Plone community. I was very surprised and humbled that we oh, were yeah. also part of the, the, the communication community effort, uh, that we, that we, that was started by many people how to, to, to cope with the, with the current situation. Yeah, uh, that was an unexpected shout out. Yeah, that was fun. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Chrissy. <laughs> so you mentioned Plone CLI. Tell me about yeah, it. Yeah. Um, Mike uh, gave a talk about a, a tool which is close to my heart because I started writing that, which is not Plone CLI, but Bob Templates Plone, which is a, a template generator, um, scaffolding builder for Plone add-ons. Uh, that's what it started. And Plone CLI is a command line user interface for that, uh, that I didn't write. I have nothing to do with that. And it's a really nice user interface or a simple to use user interface to build, uh, to create, uh, add-ons and code, uh, scaffolds that you can then fill with whatever uh, you require in your projects has uh, very sensible defaults and supports the new Splown versions. And it has gained a couple of new features that I didn't know of and that are really useful. For example, if you have an add-on, that's like the basic use case mm -hmm. to create an mm -hmm. add-on with that. And then you can say Plone CLI add control panel and it, it creates a, con it asks you a couple of questions and it creates a control panel that you can fill then with your own code, uh, defining a Python schema and, but all the boilerplate that you never memorize. I mostly copy and paste that from mastering Plone because I can't memorize that as well. <laughs> uh, that creates that for you. And the same is true, for example, for a REST API endpoint. So there's Plone CLI add actually don't know what the command is, but REST endpoint or service, uh, and it creates a REST API endpoint with some sensible defaults and example code that you can comment out or throw away. So that is a really, really nice tool for uh, for people who are new to Plone, who are jumping into Plone, who don't have like mountains of code that are sitting on and copying and pasting code from one project to the to the next one, but starting from scratch, that is an excellent yes. tool. Yes, so, so this thanks, is Mac. yeah, this is this is really a, a thing. I've talked to uh, about Plone CLI with with Paul uh, and also with Mike o online last week and with other people uh, because we really need this to integrate this somehow in in some form in our documentation because for us old seasoned uh, veterans. Uh, we just copy from from a, a, a previous project, or we know some snippet online or there. But for newbies, for people starting, and I've also uh, found it out by interviewing our uh, the some of the uh, Plone uh, Volto front end developers from Kit Concept, who are now also venturing into back end. And then it's like, okay, how did you start? Yes, well, I got something from a colleague, and they copied it. Yeah, that's not how I can. And this is where Plone CLI comes in. I think yeah, every exactly. framework has some kind of scaffolding, and this is an excellent talk and and uh, great work. That done over the years uh, by Mike, uh, you and others also maintaining the templates themselves because Plone CLI is the interface to have the scaffolding story. Um, as yeah. already mentioned, productizing Plone is maybe the odd one out, but it's a very interesting talk by Guido Stevens. Uh, thank you, Guido, for explaining uh, the, 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 the challenges between uh, developing from a product point of view or developing from a, from a, a framework point of view and, and changing things. Please watch it. I can't summarize it. I really liked uh, uh, as a showcase of what, what uh, end users, webmasters, integrators do uh, was a talk by Kim Paulison on blocks and using blocks and cards in Plone 5. It seems very simple, but this is exactly the thing that, that editors want to do and want to perform on these larger, for example, institutional websites like the, the University of Leuven that Kim is working for. On, on, and you see a lot of her her things. She is uh, demoing uh, them in in Mosaic for Plone Five, but these are also exactly the same things that came in the next talks, the stay uh, the Timo Stollerberg's keynote uh, things that Victor presented on how we are going to do those things in in Plone Six. So more talk highlights. There was a lot of news, of course, on our new React front end uh, for Plone Six. Um, yeah, there was uh, Tiberio Ichim. I th I'm not sure how many talks he, he gave. It, it feels <laughs> like 18, but uh, then it would have only been him. But he gave a lot of talks and the training, a two-day training. So kudos. Um, very impressive. Yeah, so and he's, he's, he's not only giving talks about topics. He's giving talks about topics that 
he's actually developing, he's inventing this stuff. So um, I, I can't stress that enough. That's a very impressive person. Uh, he gave a talk about Volto Slate, which is excellent. It's the next editor uh, that we're going to use in Volto. Uh, we talked about Slate quickly in the last episode, I think, so I'm not going to yep. go into that, but you should uh, uh, watch the talk. Uh, he also gave a talk on Volto Pluggable, which is like a back-end logic, uh, viewlet manager slot-like yes. thing that you can use and use uh, reuse. On the, on like the framework you have level. Pluggables and you have plugs that you can plug in. It's the frameworkish type of clone in the Volto backend. It's not the slick user interfaces, but something that as a Volto add-on developer you can use to make your stuff uh, more configurable and uh, pluggable uh, by other developers also. Yes, and then another, and then to to upgrade uh, or, or to, yeah, it's it's actually a kind of, for me technical in my head it's a kind of upgrade or or the the, the level above that is also about to be a talk about Volto slots, which is the idea of how are we going to bring portlets in some way. So those are the the configurable uh, viewlets and and. Uh, Tiberio and his colleagues have developed, uh, I think, first versions of that for uh, their customer EEA uh, to have uh, portlets in some functionality back. And another talk that really surprised me afterwards, after I, I, I viewed it, because I didn't have time, I was viewing and uh, looking at another talk, was his talk by his brother, uh, David Ishim, about what's new in Plone 6 front end for developers. And really watch yeah. that talk, because in, in like 30 or 40 minutes, he's touching like 20 subjects uh, about things that you, as if you have been working with Plone 5 backend, uh, have been doing uh, the classical de classic development and you're not sh not up to date about the the, the developer thingies uh, that are going uh, to come to plan six just watch his talk and you'll be almost up to date very Im yeah. very impressive uh, and interesting talk yeah, what's up with that family? Like two hardcore plon back end and front end developers. I I don't know what, yes. what kind of gene pool do they have. I'm kind of jealous. Uh, I think I think a gene pool we have to be uh, very thankful of. Um, yeah, then then the more high level things on on, uh, on Volto and the, the, the new React front end. So there was the uh, the, the Timo's uh, keynote on Volto, uh, where he discussed the next visual style and with uh, the the, his, the sub title of his talk was command uh, offering command and control and there was a talk later of course by uh, Victor Fernandez Dalba who represented Quanta which is a, a uh, mainly the new style a, a style guide and a new visual style which we'll talk about uh, but first Timo that <laughs> I mean, you got to watch that keynote. It's just, uh, I think that's basic knowledge about what Plone 6 will be and why it will be, how it is. Um, I think he made a really good uh, example with the image editing experience in, what was it, WordPress, uh, where uh, really huge high-level systems with beautiful front ends uh, can lose their users from uh, not thought through user interfaces. And uh, I'm, I'm not throwing stones here because Plone has plenty of these uh, odds. Uh, we, we do. It's just... a thesis w w which we shouldn't be proud of. Uh, also, images, by the way, <laughs> weird stuff with scaling. Um, but still, that was, uh, that was pretty, pretty, uh, pretty well done. And I think it got across the yes. story. So Timo, Timo really focused there on, I think, Plown the product, uh, usability for editors. Yes. Uh, just a, and one example was the image handling, but also the responsiveness, uh, the layouts. And I think it's uh, Timo really hit the, the nail on, on, on going back to one of the original purposes of Plown, which is allow everybody to, to create content in a nice, consistent and powerful way. And I think that's, that's how you should exp uh, uh, how you should read this command and control. We want to, we have always been about giving power to users to edit, uh, to create and edit their content. But then with, with great, uh, uh, but there comes also responsibility to not overwhelm them with too many options and too many technical things. And then afterwards, of course, we went back to the framework uh, with a talk by Victor explaining all the, the things that uh, uh, a kit concept, Red Turtle, uh, Odoweb, and uh, uh, Katja, Zeus, and other also smaller independent developers uh, have, have learned from using Volto, uh, the framework to build uh, uh, products for the last two years. 
on how to really get uh, this this editing even better because Volto is is like now two and a half three years old maybe three and a half when they formed its first inception and there's a lot of lessons learned from what these companies have built for their uh, customers and also what other organizations have built internally and and get this uh, uh, ready for a version two or version three so that's Quanta Quanta is the plone style guide it's a way to uh, to to visually uh, discuss and and have consistency in the components it's also backed by a project called storybook which is uh, close that's to exciting so you, you can you can there is a it's, a it's a tool where you see every single component in a rendered way you can interact with it uh, it's it's documentation code example and I don't know what what else. Yes, it's, uh, it, it's a great it's a great developer tool. It allows you to to indeed show components, but it also will allow us to to work together on on plone the product, bring back, uh, consolidate all the add-ons and all components that have been developed, uh, create them, see them individually. But uh, one of the other powers of Storybook is to it's in the name create stories with these components to show uh, uh, how things work uh, albert casado has done a lot of work on the successor of pastanaga to to create like these uh, things and storybook will be i think a really good enabler uh, uh, to do that so i know i know i know only know about storybook like two and a half or three years ago because i learned some react by going to a local react meetup here in rotterdam and two of the people now working uh, on storybook full time uh, already presented storybook at at, uh, at a meeting uh, and I was, I, that, then it was like i think version two or three and i was already um, impressed but I was just learning, still learning React myself. And now that I see it in action also in, in Volto, uh, that's, it's a really powerful thing. Uh, Quanta is many more things. Quanta is also a lot of backend uh, uh, learn things uh, uh, experience, for example, to be able to override and split the, the theming, because until now you had again one theme for both the CMS UI for the front end and also the, the components. So what I understood from Victor, that's also work that's hopefully going to flow into Volto very uh, soon, uh, is to have those, uh, to, to, to be able to, for example, use uh, Bootstrap 5 uh, for the front end uh, in, in, if you style components. And another thing we also mentioned was uh, the use of Slate as the default text component is also, I think, part of, of Quanta. Yeah, and, and it looks slick. It's a visual update on the Pastanaga UI of Volto. And uh, Victor was so kind to send me a couple of screenshots Ooh, let me that see. he used in his uh, talk. Um, and I'm going to share them with you um, if that works. Yes, that should work. So here are... Oh, how many oops. are those? Uh, it's too many, but I'm just uh, going to pick a couple. So this is an example that shows, mm -hmm. you know, that you see the toolbar, you see that uh, the style is slightly different. It's uh, very clean, very beautiful. It's very... Uh, it, it looks like something that you want to touch uh, in, uh, instantly. Um, so these are a couple of uh, mobile yeah, views. Mobile, so editing experience. mobile is changed. It doesn't drop down. It slides up. Uh, the user interface elements. It's, um, I don't know, mobile first. It's maybe a thing, a thing of the past because mobile is just everywhere. It doesn't have to be first. It's everywhere. Uh, so this is folder contents. Uh, so these, a couple of the ad form is uh, in, in the folder contents. Here is a really nice thing. Thing I like that. In the top right, you can select whatever you like. And the most important content types, page and folder in this case, are uh, selectable because uh, as a bigger items. Because yes, that's it's also usually all, all about improving the user experience. Exactly. Yeah. So this I also love this uh, this screenshot. This is an example for a form. Uh, the form user interfaces are already in Storybook, partly at least, and they look really nice. The multi-select and uh, the, all the, the input fields, so that's uh, really nice as well. Here's the editing interface. Uh, nothing super oh, wait, different. Wait, yeah. can, you, looks can you move back? Good. Can you move back, Philip? So this is an interesting part here. If you go one this, slide yeah. back. Yeah. So this is very uh, it's small, but this is the new Quanta uh, toolbar, yes. which is, will be uh, standard on every block. And this is one of those things that uh, the developers learned over the last two years. We need to make sure that every block has this Quanta toolbar where you can, uh, can rely on and count on as a developer that when your block needs some settings, 
uh, you can actually put them here in this in this new quanta uh, toolbar. And <laughs> Victor, uh, Victor also said to me, yes, that's one of your pet peeves from from two years ago, Fred, which is the the the, the eight small dots uh, to insert a new block or other things are now on top. And uh, uh, when I first tested Volto, that that uh, thing to add or do things, you see those are now moved at the bottom right with a plus, yes. because that that symbol moved away all the time. And I was so annoyed that uh, depending on yeah. your laptop on the size of the screen, so this is one of those also very important things uh, uh, that will be uh, uh, that's work that's done in quanta is is fine-tuning and improving the whole user editing experience yeah I, a lot of lot of small improvements have gotten into that so you see uh, these items so this is yeah. clicking on the plus button you can say okay yeah. what's what's gonna be in there now yeah. add an image and configure the image the sidebar pull in images uh, not going to go too much into that but there uh, this is uh, also nice like uh, list content if creator is me that's a nice user interface it shows you um, what will happen so philip yes. i think we'll have to wrap up uh, one, 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 okay, one more one more, one more. Oh, you get one more it's going to have a dark You'll... mode yeah dark mode yay yes. <laughs> we'll have to keep up with the joneses <laughs> exactly. Definitely. Philip, we've, we're at 40 minutes now. What shall we do? Quick feature news of some things, and then I, I'm afraid we'll have to pass with our, 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 our pastime, the add ons, maybe for the next uh, podcast. Yeah, I'd say so. Let's do the feature so news. One so, one day, one day, things. one day before the Plone Conf, our release manager. Maurits, yeah, I hate you and I love you <laughs> because one day before the conference, the day before we had to give the trainings, you released Plone 6.0 Alpha 1. Finally. So the first official Alpha release of Plone 6 is out. And actually, uh, on the same day, I pulled it, updated the build outs for the training and the documentation for the training to actually use that. So the training on Saturday and Sunday used Plone Alpha uh, 6, 0, Alpha 1. And also on the same day, Plone 526 was released, which has a couple of uh, bug fixes. Uh, we're not going to talk about no, the no, no, 6, no, no, 0, no. Alpha 1 release. Uh, one thing, though, is important. It uh, The uh, JavaScript ES6 stuff that we talked about in the last episode is not yet merged, but I talked to the developers who are working on that today. And they say they're very optimistic that it will be merged before Christmas and they have weekly sprints and they were actually, I just jumped into the uh, Discord uh, audio chat and they were there working on that and discussing that. So they're doing that all the time, all the, every day. <laughs> oh, those annoying developers. They develop stuff and then they release it. <laughs> 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 so, uh, some community news. Of course, with the Plone Conference, we also had the yearly uh, uh, meeting of the Plone Foundation, and we have a new board. Not much has changed. It's not that the complete board has uh, has swapped uh, uh, its its uh, its members. But Chrissy stepped down after all these years. Thank you, Chrissy. I think we had a Thanks very a nice applause for her as well. She did a lot of world work. And we chatted just before uh, the podcast who will be the next president. And we don't know because as things go, the board decides that from the, for themselves. And I saw in the, uh, the agenda for the next upcoming uh, meeting from the Plone Foundation, which will be held this evening, where they will decide amongst each other who will be the next president. So yeah, we'll have all to hail the new president whoever that may be yes and we'll report on that in a month so that will be all, all <laughs> exactly we'll be serving up old cold news in that so yeah, uh, yeah. all the wisdom for the, and thank you uh, new board for uh, continuing uh, uh, and for uh, for supporting the plant foundation which is very important work yes we have a couple of follow-ups that we could move to the next episode but uh, just a shout out yeah. Um, Taxonomy, please. We, we, we got really great feedback for this podcast. Um, at one of, one of it was a, a long email uh, with uh, follow-ups on stuff that's happening in collective taxonomy. We're going to showcase, uh, show that uh, in the next episode because uh, there's going to be a couple of new exciting features and lots of other <laughs> stuff. And uh, so we're really thankful if you throw information or feedback or critique at us. Uh, and we will incorporate that into the uh, the podcast. Obviously, obviously, this one is we don't want to talk too long, and the conference was just such a big topic that uh, we can't add uh, what we wanted to 
show and yeah. talk about. One last shout out, Philip. Um, if you're interested in Volto, as we, uh, I think, I hope we managed to explain this episode is that Volto 6 is not there yet. There's a lot of work done, but there's also a lot of consolidation. If you're interested in, in seeing Volto uh, a core with also some of the very nice add-ons that uh, companies have created, uh, Odo Web has created uh, an add-on called uh, EEA KitKat, which actually includes uh, uh, their favorite or their most uh, uh, used uh, add-ons for EEA which in one section. Which is a long list. It's a huge list if you see it, but it has Slate in it, it has other things in it, and I've already been playing it with myself. I still have to figure out some Good. things, but it's a really cool, if you want to showcase to uh, your colleagues or to we customers. Should, we should show that next time. We should show next that, really time. show it next time, yeah. because if you want to have, if you want to create a photo demo, but with some uh, uh, very important add-ons and interesting add-ons and also Slate already there, take a look at photo EEA KitKat. Yeah. And also in the next episode coming up, a demo of Collective Revision Manager, a tool where you can manage revisions, obviously, which is something really important if your database gets bloated. Yes, that's one of those secret little add-ons that we may we we should we should just organize a, a, a do a do a podcast only on add-ons. I think maybe next time or maybe one after this. This was was all about PloneConf, and next time we'll just do do uh, uh, 40, 45 minutes of add-ons. Yeah, and that's it's not the last conference. So next year there's going to be the conference in Belgium. But I talked to Mike, and maybe depending on pandem pandemic situation, obviously there's going to be a Plone Tagung. That's a German speaking conference in Germany, uh, maybe in Bonn or Cologne. I'm not entirely sure. Um, Ooh, so that would be something info. to look out for in maybe in summer next year. Uh, but it's not officially announced yet because, um, as you might have heard in the news, the uh, corona situation in Germany is a freaking nightmare at the moment. So we'll as have in many to write out that first. Yes. So, Philip, let's wrap up. We've had discussed the conference. We managed, I hope, we have managed to uh, give some more uh, background information. Uh, thank you, listeners, uh, and see you next month. Yeah, see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.